Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke, your host on the fourth Friday of every month, talking about business and how to be successful with your business here in Las Vegas. It is hot here this week. It is very hot today. Um, it's not the hottest day of the year. That was yesterday, but we're we're going to leave that behind. And we've got some great guests for you today to hopefully let you cool down, sit in the pool, have an ice cream, and uh, enjoy talking to our guest today. We have Shatoya Stressing from KMB Communications, and we're going to talk to Michelle Davis, who you know from watching this show on other weeks. And we're going to be talking about one of her new ventures and kind of work through some of the concepts of starting a new business, starting a new venture on the show. But first... I have my good friend Lucy Cantley with me. We were in the MBA program at UNLV together. You're a relatively new mom. You've got mm -hmm. a one-year-old, and you have started, it would, if that weren't enough, <laughs> she started a new business where she's helping women entrepreneurs develop the revenue streams and develop those strategies to really be successful and grow their businesses to, to, to new heights. So welcome, Lucy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us about who you are. Tell us about how you came from Cambridge, England, because that's where you grew up, right? Yep. Tell us about how you made it all the way from Cambridge, England to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, so, born and raised in Cambridge, England, and um, I met my husband. He's actually Air Force, and he was stationed in England. And so, um, I took the leap and decided that I was going to move to the U.S., and we were in Panama City, Florida for a bit. I dabbled in corporate, never quite sort of found my footing, got very mm -hmm. frustrated with poor management and just... There was a lot of that. Yes, it's there a, is a lot of poor management. That's why I started my business, so... <laughs> um, and so we moved to Las Vegas and I decided after another kind of just a uh, corporate job that I wanted to go back to school and get mm -hmm. my MBA. And through that, I sort of immersed myself in this entrepreneurial community, um, connected with a lot of investors and sort of started working with like tech startups mm -hmm. and then realized that actually that was a very high stress um, area and I like to have a bit more control and influence over what I'm able to do to move mm -hmm. a business forward and when you're talking about tech startups like there's a lot of other factors at play oh, absolutely. and you can be great at what you do and still fail miserably yeah tech startups are a whole different world uh, it's a whole it's a whole different kind of leadership and you've got investors and you've got a lot of you got a lot of chefs stirring the pot when you're doing a tech startup yeah. and uh, sometimes that's great it provides a uh, provides great guidance great disruption uh, and great great uh, forces great ideas to come together and then sometimes it's not so great it depends on depends on the team involved right. like most businesses do so tell us what kind of businesses do you get excited about what kind of entrepreneurs do you get excited about working with what's that mix of the team you like mm. to work with or what's that mix of the team you like to build around you so um when I finished my MBA, I was pregnant and I immersed myself in this community of online entrepreneurs, especially uh, women entrepreneurs who were moms. And I was really inspired by this group and decided that this was a niche that I wanted to work with. Okay. I felt like I could be totally supported in my journey of becoming a mom as well as being able to help these women with the skills that I had. Mm -hmm. So, um, I really like to work with women who have an online presence, who have an existing revenue stream. Uh, so for okay. example, I've got uh, a coach, a lawyer, um, I've got somebody else, well, like various different types of coaching, mm -hmm, mindset sure. coach, business coach, um, physical trainer, um, but they've got this existing revenue stream and then they've reached this point where they're tired of trading time for money okay and so they want to add passive income and the best way gotcha, to do that is gotcha. by adding courses programs okay. uh, a group element a membership site and so i help them tackle that because that can be a really overwhelming and really stressful project when they just want to be doing the thing that they're good at so what you're looking to do is help them uh monetize their knowledge mm. monetize their knowledge and experience put that out there so they can have a passive income stream that comes from that while still doing the things yeah. where they can get excited about and every day as well ultimately they're just serving more people they're able to take their skills and they're just their secret source and spread it across mm -hmm. more more people absolutely so there are a lot of business coaches out there and they aren't doing exactly what you're doing but um there's a lot of people out there and i know you're kind of going through uh, not a rebranding, but a, a refining of your yeah. brand. Tell us about what your strategy is. What are you branding yourself as? What do you, what do you want the world to know about you and your brand and what you bring to the community? Yeah. So, I tell people that I do something a little bit different. Um, I kind of describe myself as a strategist and a project manager. Mm -hmm. um, I've used the title business sidekick, mm -hmm. um, which because... I loved. 
but you're getting rid of it. So I'm, I'm dropping it just because I want people to be really clear on what I do. I think that it's a really... Like, I still love the foundation of Business Sidekick. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I'm coming in as, like, uh, director of operations. But that's yeah. not a term that is really familiar with my niche. So I came up with Business Sidekick because they're the hero and I'm joining their team. Absolutely. And then I'm supporting them and lifting them up and helping them kick ass. Absolutely. And, and not... Not all consultants view their role yeah. as lifting someone up. They kind of view their role as, you listen to me and we'll see how far I can take you, right? And so. that's the reason, well, one of the reasons why I'm not just a consultant or a coach. I'm an implementer. Mm -hmm. I, I like to jump in and get things done and see results. And I like to be especially invested in that. So when people work with me, they're not just getting advice. They're getting someone on their team, team who's actually doing the work with them. I think that's so important because I work with my clients in a very similar capacity and we work really hard on who do you want to bring on your team. When we get to that point, it's very much, let's make sure there's that values match. Let, let's make sure there's that personality match mm. so you're bringing someone on your team and what you're offering someone is, hey, here I am. I'm not here to, to be your partner. I'm here to be on your team. Yeah. And that's such a unique way to bring this kind of business acumen, the, the knowledge and the experience you have to help out the, these female entrepreneurs uh, yeah. who are moms just like you. It's great yeah. because they, there's not a lot of that around. So, so now speaking of business acumen and experience, what most of your clients may or may not know about you and certainly the community at large doesn't know is you were one of the directors of Rebel Venture Fund. We were both part of a student investment group, angel investing group at UNLV where the students looked at the deals and made the decisions on what companies we invested in. You were one of the directors. Yep. Tell us what you learned as an investor that helps you as a businesswoman and helps you help your clients. So I just learned so much about how to really analyze business. Um, I'm able to come into my client's business and the first thing that I do with all of my clients is a strategy session and we'll audit their business and figure mm -hmm. out what's working and what's not working. And that is very much a skill that I picked up through the Rebel, Be Rebel Venture yeah, Fund. for sure. And I, it's allowed me to have a unique perspective that the clients that I have are not used to having or seeing in their business. They are so deep into what they're doing that they, mm -hmm. they need that outside perspective. Um, so that's one factor. The other thing is that I feel like a lot of business owners don't always think of themselves as investors, but right. they are. They're owners, they've, yeah. They're owners. They've invested time and money in their business. And one, I think- 100% of the equity, 100% of the risk yeah. as a business owner, right? So I think sometimes you do have to put on your investor you hat do, yeah, and, sure. and view things from an objective standpoint. Well, we have a couple of guests joining us in the Facebook Live. My friend, my good friend Margaret from Colorado is here, and my good friend Lisa, who I had coffee with the other day. And then Glenn, thank you for joining us as well. If you guys have any questions for Lucy, we've got a little bit of time. Feel free to type them into the window and we'll get them asked. But so you talked about putting that investor hat on. Yeah. And using that, do you see a common theme across some of these business that your investor hat tells you? I know when I look at businesses, I see a couple things, but I, I wonder if you see common themes. Oh, um... You know, sometimes I think that the most common thing for my clients, everyone's multi-passionate mm -hmm. and they just want to do so many different things. And so I come in and I'm able to say, to do this successfully, you need to pick one thing and do it really, really well. One core competency. Yeah. Um, if you're doing too many things, too many wearing too many hats, it's just creating a lot of stress and it can create misalignment and burnout and your audience can get confused. And yeah. So I feel like if I was sat listening to a company pitch back in that, that room we used to use for the Rebel Venture Fund, oh. and they were telling me that they're going to do this and this and this. And, and, and we then saw those this. pitches. Yeah. I'm going to think, whoa, this sounds like they're not clear on what they want. They're all over the place and they're not going to get my money. And so I take that standpoint and sort of use that. that all right, to yeah. Core companies are very important. So all you business owners out there or prospective business owners, one thing, think about one thing. We got about 30 seconds left. Tell everybody where they can reach you. Sure. Um, so my website is lucycantley.com. Uh, it's under a bit of a revamp at the moment as I refine my brand. But the best place to find me is facebook.com forward slash the Lucy Cantley. I go live every Friday and share some business wisdom. Um, and I'd love for you to join me there. 
Well, and we would love you to join us for the next segment. Shaytoya Stressing from KMB Communications is going to tell us about her and her partner's business. I'm Jason LaDuke from Evil Genius Leadership Consultants. We'll be right back. All of you guests on Facebook Live, stick around. <laughs> 